So after Rahu Ketu, we are back with Venus. Understand your Venus in one video, the best and the worst placements, but the standard disclaimer, don't interpret things in black and white and look at the overall chart. Only then you know which placement is a good or bad one, all right? So what is the best placement? In this, we will use numerology and astrology also. So one of the best placements using astrology is Venus in the fifth house. But it should be in a reasonable good dignity, which means it should be either in own sign or exhortation or friend sign. Now, even if it is in an enemy sign or not so favorable sign, it's okay. But it should not be debilitated or uh, afflicted by two or more malefics, okay? So, for example, if, you know, Venus is with Mars and Saturn, afflicted by two malefics or it's in Virgo, then this will not be applicable. But along with this position... If you also have 6 in your date of birth and 7 or at least one of them, then then these qualities of Venus, they get magnified multiple times, which means you know, you'll be very creative, you'll be very romantic, you'll be very attractive, uh, the opposite sex will want to spend time with you and you will have a very good sense of luxury, uh, aesthetic sense will be very good, you will also have luxuries in your life. So if you have both 6 and 7, in your date of birth uh, and you have Venus in 5th in your chart, then this is like fantastic. Okay. Now, how can you have 6 or 7? So, you can be uh, having 6, 7 anywhere like, you know, you are born on June or July or you are born like, you know, 1967, 76 or your basic number is 6 or 7, like, you know, 15th or, or 24th or 5th or uh, for 7, it could be 7 uh, <coughs> 16 and or 25 or your destiny number you add your entire dob it comes to either six or seven and if both are present then it's even better like you know you you are born on 6th of july for example okay so therefore if you have all the three then that's fantastic okay now the second thing uh, which is very important is venus in navamsha lagna okay now, Venus in Navamsha Lagna or in the 7th house of your D9 or in the 9th house of your Navamsha. These three are very good placements because, see, Venus is the Atma Karak for the Navamsha chart. And when Venus is in the 1st house, then what happens is you, you are true to yourself. You can use your uh, traits in a beautiful way. So that enhances Venus's power you know, multiple times. And if it is in the seventh, it can still aspect the ninth house or the first house. Okay. So in that sense, it is good. And if it is in the ninth house, then you can learn it, you know, from a guru basically. Okay. So, yeah, so then you can take tuition from, you know, some singer, dancer, you can go to some coaching club, you know, school, and then, yeah, you can learn very well. Okay. So that is why these three placements are extremely beneficial for Venus. But again, provided they are in a reasonable, good dignity, this is what you should not forget. Okay. Now, number three, Venus exalted but well supported by either Jupiter or Trinal Lords. Okay, what does this mean? It means Venus is in Pisces where it is exalted. But either it is aspected by Jupiter or conjunct Jupiter or conjunct the fifth Lord or ninth Lord or, you know, aspected by the fifth Lord or the ninth Lord. So, if Venus is exalted and aspected or conjunct any of the three planets like, you know, fifth Lord, ninth Lord or Jupiter then this is extremely beneficial for Venus because then what happens? These three planets, 5th Lord, ninth Lord and Jupiter, they will keep you on track because an exalted Venus can make you uh, overly romantic and overly needy in re relationships sometimes. So which is a difficult placement. Uh, but if these three planets or one of the three at least are somehow impacting Venus, then you will be very optimistic when it comes to relationships. You know, you will give more... You will uh, be more forgiving, you know, your, which is required in relationships, okay? Now, this is a very bad placement. If others misuse you, you know, they can take advantage of you, okay? But in general, this is a great placement to have, provided the connection between the trinal lords and Jupiter is there. Number four, Venus well placed in the D60 chart. What is D60? D60 chart is the chart of your Atma, basically. It shows at a soul level what you are doing, okay? So, if Venus is well placed in the D60 chart, uh, then it shows you, you are 
well in tune with the energies of Venus. Okay. Now, does this mean you will have a good married life? Well, not necessarily. That has to be seen from the D1, the Bhav Chalit chart and the Navamsha. But suppose you have a great Venus in the Shashtiamsha chart, which is the D60. Then it means that you have a greater potential to make the best use of a bad bargain. What do I mean by this? So suppose your D1, D9 is indicating you have a yeah, you have a reasonably good marriage, but it is not the best sometimes. Okay. So then if Venus in your D60 is very good, then you are okay with it. You are like, okay, that's fine. You know, I, I mean, uh, I have already experienced married life many, many times before. So in this lifetime, even if it is not, you know, the most uh, incredible marriage of the century or the millennium, it's fine. You know, even, even if it just works, it's fine. So Venus, well-placed in D60, will give you very reasonable expectations because you have already experienced the fruit of that. So you are not too much obsessed about it now. Okay. Of course, this does not mean you will want to stay unmarried. But if the horoscope D1, D9 are supportive, then this is a great thing to have, basically. Now, number five, Taurus is present either in... Uh, sorry, Venus is present either in Taurus or Libra. But not in a Dusthana house. Now, what does this mean? It means Venus cannot be in 6th, 8th or 12th. You know, if it is in Taurus or Libra. Now, Venus in Taurus or Libra is a great placement. But if it is in a Dusthana, then it's a problem. Okay. So, apart from the Dusthanas, if it is in any other house, then it shows, you know, you are creative. You have, you know, you can have a good romantic life. Uh, you can have a good married life. You know, you can have good luxuries, all these things. But it should not be linked with the Dustanas, okay? Otherwise, you lose all the luxury and all the relationships and all the love, okay? So that's the problem. But if it is out of Dustanas, then this is a brilliant placement, okay? Now, what are the bad placements for Venus? I think you are more interested to know this. <laughs> People keep asking me, oh, my Venus is here. Why is it bad? You know? Chalo, anyways. So the worst, uh, or rather could be the worst placement for Venus is surprise, surprise, again, fifth house. Oh, what is this? Fifth house, uh, you said it was good, but now you are saying it's bad. Well, it can be very bad also. When can it be very bad? If, you know, Venus is in sixth, but, you know, it is in enemy sign, uh, sorry, it's in the fifth, but it is, you know, in enemy sign, uh, and, you know, it is afflicted by two or more malefics, you know. And in date of birth, you have some other numbers like, you know, eight or four, you know. Then it's like a royal, royal disaster, okay. And why? Because then what happens is, because Venus is in fifth, you are very attractive. And, you know, people want to get into relationships with you, relationship with you all the time. People are proposing you, giving you flowers, roses every time. But then the moment you get into a relationship, it doesn't work, like three months, six months, and then bang on, then that's over, okay? <laughs> so if you have eight and four in numerology and Venus in the uh, fifth house, you know, yeah, it's a difficult one. And if, you know, Mars, Saturn, and afflicting Venus, again, problem. So, or if Venus is in Virgo, which means you are a Taurus Lagna. So then, so this Venus in fifth, if supported in numerology with 6 and 7 and with Jupiter and 5th Lord, ninth Lord, then it's a great placement. Otherwise, it can be a disaster which will prevent you from continuing a relationship. It will not stop you from getting into a relationship. Okay. Now, classic Venus either in 6th or 8th. This is one of the worst placements in the D1, in the Bhavachalit chart, Okay, not in the Lagna chart. So, Venus in 6th is this, you know, classic Karaka for divorce, separation. But Venus Dasha should come, you know, 6th Lord Dasha has to come, 10th house, 10th Lord Dasha has to come, only then there is divorce, otherwise not. But in general, it's a difficult placement for Venus. Okay, so there could be a lot of disagreements in your marriage. Now, this is good for your career uh, to some extent, but relationship-wise, it is problematic. Okay, so therefore, if you have Venus in 6th, you might have to cut down your expectations from marriage. Okay. Otherwise, you may feel like better you don't get married, okay? So, either you stay unmarried or you reduce your expectations, okay, from your spouse. <laughs> now, number three, Venus in 11th. 
but in a bad dignity. This is a very difficult placement. What does it mean? It means Venus is in the 11th anywhere for any ascendant. No, but it is in any sign in debility, you know, all this. Because what happens? Venus in 11th, it is very similar to 5th house, you know. It's like saying now you can also maintain a relationship, but somehow the happiness is not there, you know. Or your spouse cheats on you or, you know, you, you become so disheartened that, you know, you are staying in an unhappy marriage, something like this. Okay. But if Venus is there in a, in the 11th house, in a great dignity, then, well, fantastic that is. Okay. But this also has to be seen in context of the overall chart, which means, you know, if your uh, if your Lagna Lord is well placed and, you know, 5th house, 5th Lord, these houses and these planets are well placed, then you may not have a lifelong bad marriage. But in general, if Venus is badly placed in the 11th, you will, you can have a bad marriage. But the marriage will not break because, you know, it's uh, 11th house and 11th house does not like to break things, okay? So that's how you can know about it. Number four, Venus in the 12th house of your Navamshacha, D9, okay? What is the 12th house? 12th house is... 12th house externally in the D1 can show affair. So that also is not a good placement. But specifically in the D9, what does it show? It shows you are always fearful. You are always insecure. Okay? It can show that if the Navamsha is not good because you are having this fear of losing. So whichever planet is in the 12th in Navamsha, you will always have the fear of losing it. So what happens? Then, you know, your spouse has gone out somewhere and you are doubting, oh, well, why why is she not coming? Why is he so late? You know, maybe he or she is flirting with somebody or having an affair or something like that. So then what happens? If you are too insecure and, you know, you uh, you bring all the insecurity in the marriage and then maybe it's a matter of time when your spouse says, oh, that's it, I cannot stay in the marriage. Or maybe you say, I don't feel secure with you, so I cannot stay with you. So either way, the marriage breaks, okay? So, therefore, if you have Venus in 12th uh, in the Navamsha, then this is a difficult placement. And if you feel you are very insecure, then you need to communicate this with your partner, you know, take some counseling, consulting, do spiritual practices. And remember, ultimately, there is only one shelter, that is God himself and nobody else, right? Last but not the least, Venus in 6th house of your Shastiyamsha chart. So, Venus in 6th, is the Maran Karak position. But if it is in the Sasti Amsha, then, then it can mean that no matter what you do, what you try, you know, it somehow does not work. Okay. So this can give you problems in various areas, you know, like you are not able to get married, your relationship is not working, marriage is not working, or you are confused, you know, should you marry this person, that person, or yeah, whatever it is, you know, you, it's a difficult situation, okay, because you are not experienced uh, for many, many lifetimes, so this problem is likely to continue, okay. So, if Venus is in the sixth house of Sashti Amsha, then generally it's a very difficult place, okay, and it will reflect in other areas also, okay. So, therefore, if you have this, you need to understand that you have to work on your Venus, okay. But nonetheless, you can work and, you know, Friday fasting is very good for Venus. And you can do some mantra, Lakshmi, these remedies, you know, they will also help you. All right. So, please let me know which are some of the best and the worst placements for Venus that you have seen in the comment section. All right. Thank you so much. If you want a consultation from me for your charge, you can find my website down. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you are. All right. Jai Siyaram.